Right here, you uh, approach I-75, and just to the south of there, you're seeing two and a half to three and a half inches of rain. And uh, this is going to be a pattern that continues here with these rain bands. And you can see here on our uh, neighborhood weather network, uh, weather bug, you can see uh, here at Clewiston, this location. Cypress Preserve, that's just to the south of Clewiston, and that's in that little yellow band of on the Doppler radar with the uh, rainfall estimates. 1.38 at Palmyra Golf Club in Bonita Springs, Naples Grand Beach Resort, an inch and a quarter in Everglades City at the Ochapi Fire Station there. Just under an inch of rain. Those are the four biggest totals that we have so far coming in on our live radar network as we total up the rain from across southwest Florida. Let's go ahead and show you uh, uh, again right around the Immokalee area, Ave Maria, uh, about two to two and a half inches of rain. And that's, uh, again, some of the populated areas with the most rain thus far. Now, we are tracking rain. Let me go back uh, and, and back this up. Uh, I forgot to do a reset last time I, I used this. This is our future radar, one-hour future radar. And you see the, the rain bands are, are fairly moderate. There's no real big, gigantic, heavy downpours right now. Those are actually going to increase, too, as we get the center of the storm a little closer to southwest Florida. But there's where it's raining right now at 1041. And I'm going to put this into motion to show you that those rain bands are maybe a little heavier downpour consolidating around Lehigh Acres and tracking toward Fort Myers uh, just to the south of Colonial Boulevard here, as it looks, and then heading toward the Cape Coral Bridge. Um, but these little rain bands here, for the most part, are moving at about 35 miles per hour. The problem areas occur whenever we get rain ban after rain ban after rain ban. And that's why South Lee County around Bonita Springs is under that flash flood warning because we have seen some downpours there. But as I just showed you, some of the heaviest rain has been inland thus far. We're still awaiting for the 11 o'clock advisory. We certainly will bring that to you as soon as it comes out, and we'll see if we have any sort of different news, good or bad, with Irma. And right now, we're going to send it back to the news desk. We have new video seniors being evacuated from an abandoned department store in Port Charlotte. 35 people evacuated from their health care facility, taken to that empty building. They were then evacuated again, loaded onto ambulances. Now they're at Atwood Elementary School. Oh, that's tough to see, having them have to go through that twice. People in the McGregor area of Fort Myers are worried about flooding. That neighborhood already tends to flood when it gets a lot of rain. It's just at the Caloosahatchee and very low, so that's an evacuation area. Brittany Weiner is along McGregor right now, and you found someone living there? I did, Chris. I'm actually uh, at the end of Donna Drive, which is just off of McGregor here along the Caloosahatchee. And uh, just in the last hour since our last live shot down here, um, conditions have really started to pick up. We've started to see the wind and the gust pick up here, and we've started to see uh, the water get a little rougher. Now, I do want to take you over uh, to Steve, who actually lives here on Donna Drive. You came down here. You just wanted to check out because there's a concern about storm surge. I mean, worst case scenario, we could see 10 feet of storm surge in this area. So what did you want to come down here and see? Try to see how low it's getting right now. You know, it's as low as it's been since I've lived here. So, just hoping it's not going to come up. They say how, as much as they say it is. Right. And uh, where is your house at? Do you feel like you're safe hunkering down in this area? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm at least 16 feet above uh, the, the street level on my home, second floor, and it's eight inches of concrete all the way around, even the roof. So, I feel like that was the better place to than any else and any other place I could think of. So. Right. Are you going to keep coming down and checking out? Yeah, periodically, yeah, just to check on things, see how it's going. And, and you've taken in uh, uh, some friends. This is Nick. And Nick, you actually said that you, you live off McGregor, but your home, you're not convinced that you would feel safe riding it out there. No, I've got rooms that are built right on the surface. And given the, the new calls for storm surge, I feel that it just it really took the decision of whether to stay at home or whether to, to go elsewhere out of my hands. It was um, really a no-brainer, fortunately. Um, good friends in town that are going to take me in and look after me and hope for the best together and ride this out. Because yeah, you said your wife is pregnant and she was able to evacuate the area. Yeah, she was on one of the last flights out of uh, RSW, fortunately, so that was a big um, kind of thing off the uh, concern off the list, and then it was just kind of prepare the house as well as we can and take care of our dog and myself and get our important stuff and just get out. 
and you were saying you were concerned because you're going to stay here, just nervous what you're going to go back to. It, um, it's tough being in there and really had to make peace with a lot of different possibilities before leaving the house. Is, was last night the last time I was going to sleep there? Was this morning the last morning I was going to wake up there? Am I even going to have anything to go back to? It's, uh, it's a, really um, some difficult things to, to think about in the wake of something like this. Especially, you know, you guys are three months out from welcoming a child. Yeah, it's... Um, We've been working hard to prepare the baby's room and um, pretty close to putting on finishing touches. And so it's more than just, um, you know, any of the things inside our house. We had really been able to start to visualize, um, you know, our future changing and growing in that house. And it um, looks a lot less certain right about now. So uh, did either of you pack up, you know, any sentimental items that you really wanted to make sure, you know, weather the storm with you? Uh, well, I think his motorcycles, that was, a, <laughs> that was a big thing there. And I've packed up um, uh, my grandfather's U.S. Army flag and some pictures and just, uh, you know, the, the things are not as important as the people, but you know, some things really can't be replaced, so we did try to snag those on the way out. Yeah. And you said that, you know, you're going to continue to watch the conditions. Obviously, you're home very close to the Caloosahatchee, so uh, if you do start to see some of that significant storm surge, you know, what's your feeling going to be if you start to see it creep up in your home? Oh, uh, that, that's my fear. I, my, my bikes are only about eight to nine feet off the uh, street level, so... That's good. I might be spending some time tonight jacking them up and trying to get as many cinder blocks under them as I can to try to lift them up a few more feet. <laughs> how many people, how many animals do you guys have there tonight? Uh, right now, three people, two animals, but uh, we got a couple other people on the block that uh, are a little concerned as well, and I think they're going to be joining us tomorrow. Yeah. I've seen people in, in neighboring homes. That they have their lights on. They also have families inside. Uh, does that seem to be the case that people are ready to ride it out? They feel safe here? Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I... Has, I, I told my wife we had to stay, you know, we're we're pretty high up and God forbid some people here don't, you know, expect the worst and it does happen. You know, we've already told them that, hey, you know, you got a place, you know, just come knock on the door. All right. Well, we're wishing you the best of luck. And of course, as we said, you know, there's the chance of a, of a 10 foot storm surge. Uh, we have a man here who's obviously rescuing his uh, chicken here, life jacket on, you know taking safety first, I guess. Uh, but as I said, you know, we have the possibility of uh, obviously, you know, the extreme 10 feet of storm surge. And as the, you know, our meteorologists have said, and they really want to drive, that's worst case scenario. Um, so, you know, as you just heard, a lot of people preparing, they feel safe here, they're ready to hunker down, um, but they're also preparing for the worst down here. And another thing I want to show you is also the Veterans Memorial Bridge. You know, usually on a Saturday night, we see a lot of people driving uh, to and from Cape Coral and Fort Myers, but tonight, uh, no one really taking their chances because law enforcement really advising people that once these winds sustain about 40 miles per hour, they want people not to travel uh, over those bridges because it's just not safe. I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. You know, that's one of those only in Florida moments when a man with a chicken <laughs> walks behind That someone. live interview had a little bit of everything. I mean, yeah. the chicken was light and funny, but hearing that man talk about his pregnant wife and they had just finished oh, yeah. getting the nursery ready and now when they go home, their house may be flooded. I mean, it really brings home the humanity of what we're dealing it with. Sure this does. is going to upend people's lives here in Southwest Florida. And neighbors helping neighbors, too. Yes. There's, there's good in all of this. So we just got to remember that if we can just get through it. Certainly. The uh, Naples Pier is closed right now because of the wind. Chad Oliver out there live tonight in the First Alert Storm Tracker. And he's using our one-of-a-kind tools to show you why the pier is so dangerous right now. Well, Peter, good evening. We're seeing the conditions worsen within the last hour. And nothing heavy right now. You'll see that in a second, though. Uh, just a steady rain falling. We are at a slice of rich Southwest Florida history. You're talking about lives getting upended. When you see landmarks like the Naples here destroyed by a hurricane, you really know that there's some devastation going on. This is built back in 18.
1988. It was originally a, a freight and passenger dock. They have gone through so many hurricanes through the years. You're looking at the foot of the pier where back in the 1920s, like 100 years ago, there was a post office here. They had a fire. It burnt the post office and part of the pier. Since that time, I mean, there have been multiple hurricanes that have uh, either caused the pier to be destroyed or collapsed. Uh, the most devastating was back in 1960 with Hurricane Donna. Old Naples uh, people know exactly what I'm talking about. That was a really powerful storm, and, and they've rebuilt uh, through the years. Every time there's been a hurricane, this is one of those spots that's come back better, stronger, and people still flood here to the Naples Pier. Whenever you have visitors come to town, they want to see the beach, and they want to get a picture by the Naples Pier. You can see the rain band coming down. So in the last hour, we've been sitting out here and, and I walked out on the dock. I just jumped back in the, the storm tracker here to do this report for you. But the surf in the Gulf of Mexico is beginning to pick up. You, you come out here on a typical day, you, the Gulf is flat like glass. Not right now. The surf is beginning to pick up. The rain is starting to become a little bit stronger. I want to come back inside the first alert storm tracker and show you as my, of course, the, the menu. Uh, let's get us back in the right page here. The winds are not very strong, Peter and Krista. Right now it's minimal. I'm looking at my, one of my tools here that I can see uh, wind speeds coming out of the north at five miles per hour. So you can see the trees and palm fronds aren't even blowing outside. That will certainly change in the hours to come. Chad Oliver at the Naples Pier. Let's send it back to Peter and Krista studio. Well, we watched it happen last night. I think we're watching it happen again now. It's something called an eye wall replacement cycle. You get a small inner eye wall to form up and then a larger forms around it and takes over. And once it does take over, you see a strengthening phase beginning. And yeah, I think that's what's going on. You see sort of that smaller little circle and now we got that bigger circle going around it. It's not that perfect donut we saw this time last night, uh, but the, the thunderstorm activity blossoming around it, uh, the cloud tops cooling around the eye wall. You're looking at IR satellite imagery, so you're looking at more or less the temperature of the cloud tops. You see those bright colors showing up. That's an intensifying eye wall on the western side of uh, Irma's center. Here's a look at uh, the eye on Doppler radar. You can really see it here. There's your inner eye wall. There's your outer eye wall. It's nearly complete now. It's going to sort of starve that inner eye wall. This will take over. And with that, I, I suspect an uptick in winds. We're going to get the advisory coming in uh, from the NHC at 11 o'clock. Uh, and it would make sense. It's moving away from Cuba. It's moving over these warmer waters. We're talking about uh, water temperatures in the middle and upper 80s, 85 degrees in its path. Now, something... Uh, JP and I were just talking about. As it's moving a bit more slowly, perhaps you can get a little more upwelling. It's where you move away the top layer of the water on the uh, Gulf of Mexico and you bring up the cooler water from below. That could help. That definitely helped with Wilma to weaken it as it moved close uh, to the area. But uh, also what could help to perhaps weaken it is some wind shear here. Uh, we're starting to see the southwesterly wind showing up in the clouds. You see the motion here uh, that's steering Irma to the north. We do believe it has made that turn. So it could start to feel that. And when we talk about hurricanes, they want to be completely vertically stacked, uh, vertically stacked, that is. They don't want to see those winds that sort of tilt it. So any push we can get on that inner core, that would perhaps uh, that would perhaps help to bring down those winds a bit. But still, regardless, we're going to see at the very least major hurricane winds right now 120 miles per hour we don't have that 11 p.m but it's coming soon we'll bring it right to you winds 120 moving west northwest very slowly at seven miles per hour i do suspect it'll speed up i want to give you an idea on the winds once again i i can't show this enough so we go on through uh the rest of the night here tonight we go into the early morning hours on our sunday and already by 2 p.m this is when the center of is very close to southwest florida it's when we're into that eye wall it's pushing on shore and we're talking gusts over 115 120 sustained winds in that range uh in all likelihood too continues to push its way northward those winds stay very strong and again, the worst of the winds come during the afternoon and early evening on uh, Sunday, tomorrow. The worst of the storm surge occurs after, for many of us, after the center of Irma pushes to our north because that's when we get the onshore component to the wind. That's when Irma's circulation is steering that water towards the coast. So if you're listening to our, uh, to our stream, if you lose power, if you're listening on the radio and you hear us tell you that the center has passed, don't think that the threat is over because by the time this gets north of the Fort Myers area, north of Naples, that's when we get that southwesterly wind. So when we get that, uh, that inland push 
to the water, and that's when the storm surge is going to come in. That's when the waters are going to rise. Continues to lift to the north, and we still have tropical storm force winds that will likely keep that water uh, from really escaping. As we go uh, through the afternoon, by the evening, the winds do finally start to subside on our Monday. But this is a good 24 to 36 hour event. It's going to be a long, long day here tomorrow in southwest Florida. Again, there's your eye of Irma. We're already seeing those rain bands work their way in. Uh, Rob Dunn's tracking that down to a street level, so I'll throw it over to Rob. All right, uh, thank you, Jim. As, as Jim had mentioned, these initial rain bands are now swinging through southwest Florida and bringing the heaviest of rain to areas of Collier County, most specifically. I have our radar position at the intersection of Immokalee Road and I-75. There is a Vanderbilt Beach Road and I-75. And as you can see, we've got some locally heavy rain that's falling here in these areas uh, that are now to the east of 75, so uh, an area that is relatively safe from the storm surge event that is a bit possible. Uh, as this hurricane uh, comes very close or makes landfall in southwest Florida tomorrow. As you move toward the south, there's some very heavy rain from Naples Park down toward North Naples, and everything is pushing toward the Gulf of Mexico right now. Because this is a rain ban, essentially all the all the, the rain is being pushed from the inland areas of southwest Florida and then due toward the west as it approaches the Gulf of Mexico. I want to spend a lot of time on a few specific locations tonight because literally tens of thousands of our neighbors tonight are inside a few buildings, including the North Collier Regional Park, a shelter. Uh, this, of course, is a shelter that is at capacity right now. But as you can see, if you're watching our coverage on, the, on your smartphone app or perhaps on a TV at the uh, at the uh, hurricane shelter, some areas of locally heavy rain outdoors right now, it will lighten in intensity over the next 15 minutes as this uh, burst of heavy rain continues to push toward the west. Two other communities that are taking in a lot of people tonight would be Ave Maria and Immokalee. And one of the prime concerns, as my colleagues have been talking about over the past several hours, is the potential of brief uh, spin-up tornadoes. Now, we are technically still under a tornado watch that goes for the next uh, hour or so from the National Weather Service. And something I've been paying very close attention to is what the radar looks like when it comes to relative velocity. As of right now, nothing is showing signs of rotation with these uh, downpours and storms over Ave Maria and Immokalee. But of course, we'll watch this very closely because as so many people are squarely positioned here in Immokalee, if I'm not mistaken, there's two uh, hurricane shelters inside a city limits here in Immokalee. The heaviest of the rain for the time being is to the south of the city, but when you take a wide view of what's happening across Hendry and northern Collier counties, everything is moving toward the west, and there is some very heavy rain now that is moving toward the, the LaBelle community, pushing toward the west, uh, which means the other larger shelters in Lee County, like toward Germain Arena and Alico Arena, will also see an uptick in the rain coverage as you move through over the next five to ten minutes. You'll also know here to the south there being told all right, so I'm being told that the 11 o'clock advisory is coming in a moment early, so if the control room could switch over to Lynx uh, 1 as the graphic source, uh, we'll switch right in here. This would be the 11 o'clock advisory, and uh, perhaps the most notable feature of these three facts is that one right there. This hurricane is now moving toward the northwest at 6 miles an hour, uh, which confirms what we've been talking about now for the past several hours. This hurricane now is, in fact, lifting toward the northwest, and as it lifts toward the northwest, uh, that would put it close closer and closer here to southwest Florida as we move through the day tomorrow. Now, this information is coming out as we speak. We're going to see this together for the first time. So max sustained winds are holding to 120 miles an hour, which puts this uh, squarely. It's a category three strength hurricane. Wind gusts around the eye wall of the hurricane right now being reported at 150 miles an hour. So here's where we are right now. As, as my colleague Jim Dickey was showing you with analysis of the satellite. Let's take a look at the uh, the new forecast cone and uh, Yep, it's another not a huge change for us. Unfortunately, you'll notice the official forecast cone here has the eye of this hurricane moving uh, potentially over top of Collier and Lee counties or perhaps as far to the west as just offshore. But you'll notice the, something else new here is that the, the, the strength, the intensity uh, now would be forecast at category three strength. So that is something new, uh, a change in an update uh, from the APM advisory earlier tonight. If we could, let's try and zoom in a little bit closer here. As, as you have learned, I'm sure if you didn't realize this before, for the advent of Hurricane Irma. The way these forecast cones work is that the eye or the center of the hurricane uh, could be anywhere inside the uh, the center of this cone. So as we get towards Sunday night, uh, that is when the eye wall uh, potentially moving along the shoreline here of, of Lee and Charlotte County. I'm being told we're going to send things over to my colleagues, uh, uh, Chief Meteorologist Robert Van Winkle of NBC2 and Chief Meteorologist John Patrick of ABC7. Fellas. And uh, good we, job, Rob. We, we have been tracking this very closely. And look, Robert, the the
turn has, has happened. Northwest, but also the speed uh, that we've been commenting on all evening has still stayed really, really slow. But the turn is happening, and it is still headed in this direction. But we've got some good breaking information for you, new breaking information for you about the hurricane. Uh, the speed still remains at 120 miles per hour, so it's a strong Category 3 major hurricane. But, JP, uh, as we play this out, we can see, as Rob showed us, uh, as the storm continues to move off to the north and to the west, it's not looking like it will get any stronger, which is pretty fair news. That is that is some pretty good news. What is it? They're it's the, at the shear. shear. Excellent. Um, we've been we were showing a product. I've, I've shown it a couple of times during the course of the evening, and um, it, it's called the the tropics hotspots, hotspots between Cuba and Florida, that would give this an opportunity to develop. And uh, there was a favorable area right in here, but as it approached. Florida, there was a little pocket right in here that was not favorable, um, and that was due to wind, wind shear that is uh, picking the storm up and perhaps some upwelling, a little bit of cooler water underneath getting pulled up by the storm with its slow movement, yeah. um, and, and perhaps those factors are keeping it at uh, 120. It may strengthen a little bit in the morning here, up to 125, but I mean, this, this is this is still coming for us. This is different, and also 120 mile per hour winds is nothing to sneeze at. Please listen to what we're saying. A major hurricane is still coming to Southwest Florida. A major hurricane with 120 to 125 mile an hour winds could be more than that is still coming this way. So we are not calling off uh, the dogs. We're not saying that in any stretch of the imagination is this necessarily good news, but it is news that does take down that wind speed. The storm surge potential is still there. The track has not changed that much. So with the track still in play and a major hurricane still coming up at us, we cannot begin to say that this is over or even better than it was before. It's still a very serious situation. And it's still going to be a very slow moving system. Um, you know, even though it is moving off toward the northwest, we're still going to have to deal with this tomorrow afternoon yeah. into tomorrow evening. And you see there's eight o'clock tomorrow evening, the position from the hurricane center. That's going to be about when, and even sooner than that in Collier County, um, when we're going to start seeing that storm surge. Come and remember, when we talked about storm surge and you compare Charlie to Irma, Charlie came through here within just a matter of hours. It was a Cat 4 with, just yes, you keep telling me to look at this camera and I apologize, but uh, Charlie was a Cat 4 and it came through within a matter of hours. Irma is a Cat 3 and it's going to take hours to get it to go by us. So there's going to be more resident time of that wind over the Gulf of Mexico water to push the water in our direction. We are still under a great deal of danger for significant storm surge. Even though you don't see a four here anymore, it's the forecast for the 11 o'clock advisory. And you know what? It could go back to a four, so we're still not letting our guard down. But that is uh, the different and breaking news in the weather today. Absolutely. And how many times have we seen that? You know, we, we get a little bit of a weakening and then it strengthens again. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a lot of time and a lot of water to go over. So we've uh, we've broken the news for you. The 11 o'clock advisory, you've been waiting for this, is in. A major hurricane is still headed to southwest Florida. A major hurricane with 120 mile per hour winds forecast on its way.